Hello, so uh, we've uh, created the class uh, definition here with a variable and a function inside it uh, and um, we've uh, created an object of that class uh, using the syntax here that's the class name followed by the parentheses and we've assigned that object to uh, a variable here in the normal way uh, then to uh, access the variables inside that object uh, you, you use the dot notation uh, followed by the name of the the variable that you want to access. So if you want to access uh, the variable name variable one inside uh, my object one, then we type the name of uh, uh, the variable that holds my object one, followed by the dot, followed by the name of the variable uh, within my object one that we're trying to access. And then uh, so uh, yeah, you can see that here, and it just. Uh, it's being uh, the result is being passed to the print function. So this line of code here will print the uh, value one because uh, variable one is being initialized to uh, the value one inside the class definition. Uh, so when I run this, uh, we'll see it print one to the console, and there it is. Okay, so uh, this is how you access uh, variables inside objects. Uh, now we want to access the function inside the object. So uh, that's done in uh, a very similar way. You just uh, type the name of the object. That's my object one, followed by the dot, and this time followed by the name of the function instead of the name of the variable. So, of course, because it's a function, we have to use the uh, parentheses to actually call the function. Uh, so, uh, <coughs> so that we can uh, make this line of code execute the function body here. Uh, so looking at the function body here, we can see that uh, it just consists of a print statement and it prints the string, hello from my class. So uh, we're expecting when this code is, is run now uh, to see hello from my class printed at the console. So I'll just uh, press Alt P and we can see that that's exactly what's happened down there. So that's great. But if we look closer at the uh, at the function definition and the function call, uh, you might notice uh, that there's something uh, a bit unusual. Uh, you might even think, well, why is this even working? Because in the function definition here, a parameter is being specified, and I'm not providing a value for that parameter uh, when I call the function, and usually that causes an error. Uh, but the reason it doesn't cause an error is because uh, for uh, functions defined inside a class, Python provides a value automatically to the first uh, parameter and the value that it provides uh, to that parameter is the object itself that you're using to call this function so it's as if this object is getting passed into this function here and it's being assigned to the variable self uh, which is uh, then going to be available inside the function body and we're going to take a look at that now just by passing that variable to the print function and uh, now I'll now I'll, um, I'll execute the script again Alt P, and we'll see what the print function well you can see what the print function has made of the variable self which holds the object that we created earlier so here it is uh, it says that um, uh, main uh, dot my class object at uh, ox and then a number so what does this mean? Well, underscore underscore main underscore underscore is like the top level object in uh, Python uh, and the my class uh, class here it is being treated as though it was a um, a property of that top level class which is an interesting uh, philosophical um, slightly uh, philosophical anyway um, idea because um, the whole Python thing is being treated as as if it's an object. In fact, uh, it may even be that it's implemented in that way. In that way, I'm, I'm not entirely sure. Anyway, it's an interesting idea. Um, uh, my class is, of course, the uh, class that we defined ourselves up here. Uh, then it tells us that uh, what's being uh, named here is, is actually an object. It's not the class. It's it's the ob It's an object um, of that class. Uh, and it tells us that it's at um, this number here. So the object that we created is at um, this number. Now what that means is, um, is that it's 
uh, well this is the location in memory uh, of that object OX is the hexadecimal uh, signifier and then this is the actual hexadecimal number um, uh, which represents the location of the object in memory and if you were to open up your BC's memory and if you were able to look inside that memory uh, and uh, locate uh, this location here uh, then you'd be able to see the actual uh, byte layout of your of your object which is an interesting idea so uh, that was a, a bit of an aside there but it was interesting I think so uh, uh, worthwhile but the uh, um, question is uh, why is this value always always provided to um, provided to uh, functions within a class like this uh, well it's so that you can access the variables from within that class uh, say we wanted to access uh, variable 1 for, that's in our class here uh, but we wanted to access it uh, within uh, this function here well the way we'd do it is by um, uh, by using the self variable uh, which uh, refers to this object which we used to call the function uh, and then simply use the dot syntax as usual uh, to uh, refer to uh, the variable uh, within my object one. So my object one has been assigned to the value uh, has been assigned to the variable self, and now we're accessing variable one inside my object one. So uh, it's a little bit circular. Uh, don't worry too much if it's not completely apparent, but um, uh, you'll it'll become second nature once we start to use it later on. Uh, so. Uh, I guess it would be a good idea just to uh, run this script so that you can see that um, the value one will be printed uh, because um, because uh, variable one inside my object one has the value one. So when we print self dot variable one, uh, uh, one will be printed to the console. Let's see that. Alt P, and uh, as expected, one is printed down here to the console. Okay. As usual, uh, if any of that didn't make sense, then it's really not important. Uh, I tend to think that if something isn't understood immediately, it's because it's not that important to you just yet, which is completely fair enough. Um, as soon as it becomes important, as soon as you, you see the usefulness of it later on, when we're actually um, creating games in in, uh, in Blender with Python, uh, you'll, you'll really start to uh, get these ideas without even having to think about it, really. So don't worry about it now. Um, okay, so that's really um, uh, that, that's really uh, a good introduction to classes already. I think um, I'll go on in, in this uh, in in the same video to uh, demonstrate that um, you've already used uh, classes quite a lot. For instance, a string uh, is a class, uh, and we can see that by the fact that it has functions uh, which we can access using the dot. Uh, syntax. Um, I'm actually referencing it via a string literal here. Uh, probably that's a bit unusual, but uh, let's go ahead and run with this. So we'll just uh, pass that to the print function. Uh, and notice that the string here is um, is all in lowercase, but I've called the upper function on it. And as you might expect, uh, this function uh, converts. Well, no, it uh, returns a copy of this string in uppercase. So we're expecting uh, this line to print. Um, uppercase hello to the console so let's see that alt p and as expected you see hello printed down there uh, we could have done that in a very similar way um, just by assigning the assigning a string to uh, to a variable first and then calling uh, the upper function on that string uh, on that variable uh, which contains the string object and I'll again pass this to the uh, print function uh, so I've assigned world to my string variable, and then m I'm using my string variable to call the upper function on that string object that's held inside the my string variable. Then I'm passing the uh, new string, which is returned by the upper function, uh, I'm passing that value to the print function. So we'll see this time uppercase world printed to the screen, and again we'll see uppercase hello uh, printed to the screen, followed by uh, uppercase world. So let's see that alt p. You can see hello and then world being uppercase world being printed uh, to the console here uh, by this line here. Okay, so we're nearly there. I think um, uh, I think I might start the Blender game engine tutorials now. So hopefully I'll see you soon. Thanks for watching.